Let's bring out our star, the creator and originator of Bugs Bunny, Mel Blank. Come on in. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to meet you and to introduce myself. I'd like to tell you a little about my background. When I first came to Hollywood, it seems when film producers heard my vocal calisthenics consistently and loud, they shouted, No! This guy don't rate with movie photogenics. They said my face was meant for radio. They said his face was meant for radio. Don't rub it in. So I developed character projection upon the air and finally got a call. Producers hollered, Mel is our selection, cause he's the biggest character of all. Cause he's the biggest character of all. You guys can be replaced, you know. I became the happy postman with a manner so beguiling, you remember Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> I became a train announcer, and my tonsils did a conga with train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop Kamanga. <laughs> they said that he'd look good on radio, and everybody told him where to go. No coaching from the audience, please. <laughs> As a violin teacher, I made a nice penny, which ain't doing bad when you work for Jack Benny. What a tune your fiddle brings on, how I wish it had no strings on. (laughs) I force a smile and try to please and cry upon my pillow. I've even been calliope's Forgive me, please, Patrillo. (laughs) (laughs) The guy could sing so long Because his face was meant for radio I heard that. As Pedro, when I see a girl with grace, ah, Chiquita, I say, pardon me for talking in your face, senorita. (laughs) And then this little guy, I've saved for last. I'm Zuki, and in the fix-it shop, I'm the president of the... I'm 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 the... Not so fast! is taking in a lot of gold. Because his face was meant for radio. It's a lie. Why do you think I got a fix-it shop? Because I had to find a way to pay the rent. I'm oh, it is known as a successful flop. Because before I get a quarter, it is spent. I'm on a lot of air shows. If I'm lying, I should choke. My tax consultant says if I get one more show, I'm broke. So why do you think I got a fix-it shop? Cause for radio his face was meant Agents get commission Don't forget withholding tax My dentist and physician And my wife's account at Saks Publicity and writers Oh my aching back and head If I get laryngitis Then I might as well be dead My paper profits grieve me Cause they never reach the bank My assets please believe me like my second name, are blank. So why do you think he's got a fix-it shop? And I only hope the darn thing really clicks. I am the lowest of the guys on top. He has found that fame and fortune doesn't mix. There's dough for entertainment, bills and bills the whole day long. I even had to pay a guy to write this stinking song. So why do you think I got a fix-it shop? Cause I'm really in a heck of a fix. Who in car fare? I'm really in a heck of a Colgate Tooth Powder presents the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Jerry Hausner, Hans Conried, the sportsman, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of the voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs>
What's up, Doc? <laughs> yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mel playing his new character, Zookie. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. everybody. Hello, everybody. 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 <laughs> Hi. <laughs> And starring himself in person, Mel Blanc. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Until Christmas, and in Mel Blanc's little town, young men, eager to make a good impression, are buying Christmas gifts for their young ladies. At the local furrier's, Sam Brown is saying to the clerk, I'll take this fur coat, wrap it as a gift, and send it Christmas morning. At the jewelry store, Tom Williams is saying, I'll take this diamond bracelet, wrap it as a gift, and send it Christmas morning. And in the candy shop, where Mel Blanc has been shopping, Mel is saying, I'll take this two-pound box of peanut brittle. No, don't wrap it as a gift. I'll eat it right here. <laughs> So Mel ate the peanut brittle. Right now, we find him in his fix-it shop with his girlfriend, Betty. Being very low on funds, Mel is turning the pages of a mail-order catalog, hoping that the pictures may suggest a gift for Betty. Broom handle, garbage pail, <laughs> nail polish, eye wash, diamond ring for a coat wristwatch, hand wipers, <laughs> shoe horn. Mel, huh? stop turning the pages so fast. Oh, all right. Well, let's start from the front of the catalog. Yeah, all right, good. Uh, page one, women's dresses. Page two, women's bathrobes. Page three, women's nightgowns. Page four... Betty, stop turning the pages so fast. <laughs> oh, we don't need this old catalog anyway. That's right. I got you a perfectly wonderful gift last year without the catalog. Oh, by the way, Betty, what did you get me last Christmas? Oh, don't you remember, darling, those long-handled Chinese back scratchers? <laughs> back scratchers? Yeah. And I've been serving salad with them all year. <laughs> Gosh, Betty, won't it be swell when we're married and can have Christmas in our own little house? We'll get up Christmas morning and look at the tree with all the presents. Yes. And then maybe we'll hear the patter of little feet around the tree. Betty, Santa Claus doesn't bring children. <laughs> I know that, Mel. And I think you should also know that Willie Murdoch is giving me a wonderful gift. And very expensive. <laughs> Willie Murdoch, Willie Murdoch. <laughs> He's probably just trying to impress your father. Betty, why does your father favor him over me? He's got little narrow shoulders, and I've got... Uh, well, he's got a small forehead, and, and I've got... Uh, um, he's got practically no chin, and, and I've got... Uh, uh, gosh, we look so much alike, I don't see how your father can tell us apart. <laughs> Willie will take care of that with his Christmas gift. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm going to get some money and get you a much bigger Christmas present. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Colby. Hello, Father. Betty, are you here again? How many times have I told you to stay away from this no-good, timid nincompoop? Father, that's not true. Mel is not timid. <laughs> now, that's right, Betty. Betty, this, this pauper will never amount to anything. Is that so? Yes, that's so. Well, I bet you don't have a quarter to your name. Is that so? <laughs> that's so. <laughs> Well, look, Mr. Colby. Betty, you're going back to the supermarket. You should be helping Willie prepare for the new radio program. Yeah, all right, Father. Goodbye, Mel. Bye, Betty. Mr. Colby, did you say something about a radio program? Yes, but it needn't bother you. Needn't bother me, Mr. Colby? Me, the greatest actor in town? Oh, never mind that. I came in to see if you could straighten out this signet ring I'm wearing. It's gotten a little lopsided. Oh, that's easy, Mr. Colby. Just lay your finger on the counter here. <laughs> uh, uh, here? Yeah, that's fine. Now, I'll just take this hammer and... 
Oh, Melbourne! <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Colby? The ring isn't lopsided anymore. No, now my finger is. <laughs> Well, Mr. Colby, if I've done anything to hurt you, let me make it up by acting in your radio program. Oh! Uh, what kind of a program is it, anyway? Well, it's an idea my manager, Willie Murdoch, gave me. I'm sponsoring a program which appeals to the ladies. Great idea, Willie's. Supper at the supermarket. Supper at the supermarket? <laughs> See, that's a natural for me. I would make a perfect master of ceremonies. Oh, no, I'm leaving. Oh, don't go, Mr. Colby. Listen to this. Uh, now you have eight. Will you try for sixteen? Who does that sound like? Tommy Manville. <laughs> no, no, Phil Harris. Uh, oh, I'll even do his accordion. I should have said Baker. I'll even do Baker's accordion. I can do either one of them, but I'll do... <laughs> but I'll, I'll do Phil Baker's accordion. Listen to this. <laughs> Well, look, wow. wait a minute. I, I'm a natural for... Uh, I'm a natural for radio, Mr. Colby. Listen to this. You've got to start out each day with a song. Even if things go wrong. <laughs> Mel Blank, you uh, come around to my program and I'll break every bone in your body now. How do you like that? Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> Please, Mr. Colby, give me a chance. Besides, I need the money badly. I want to get Betty a Christmas gift and... I don't want to give her just anything. I want to give her something she'll like. Now, don't worry. If she likes you, she'll like anything. <laughs> Besides, my manager, Willie Murdoch's going to be the master of ceremonies. Well, I got to go now. Oh, oh, wait, Mr. Colby. Just one more. Ah, uh, uh, there's good news tonight. The international picture is a bit clouded. <laughs> On the one hand, we see good tidings. On the other hand, we see bad tidings. <laughs> Who knows? Tomorrow, maybe, just tidings. In conclusion... In conclusion, I'm leaving. Oh, gosh, I'll never be able to get enough money for Betty's gift. What'll I do? Ah, there's bad news for Mel Blight tonight. In conclusion, we can safely say that for Mel, it looks very blank. <laughs> trouble can spell the doom of happiness between bride and groom. That little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, has ruined many a romance. Don't you be an innocent victim. Here's a helpful hint. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Now, Victor Miller, the sportsman, and Uncle Remus. Around me, little chillin', before you go to bed. Just give him your attention, hear what he's got to say. I'll tell you how the animals got that way. The leopard's pappy got the gout from eating too much speckled trout. His mammy dreamed of polka dots, and that's how the leopard got his spots. That's what Uncle Remus said. The leopard got his spots. More, 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 Uncle Remus, tell us more. The piggies 
saw his monkey friend swinging by his other end. He tried the same thing on a rail, and that's how the piggy got a curly tail. That's what Uncle Remus said. That's what Uncle Remus said. He tried the same thing on a rail. That's why the piggy got a curly tail. Time to go to bed. That's why, Uncle Weemus. Good night, Uncle Weemus. She died, Uncle Weemus. <laughs> or we'll put a hole in your head. Your Mel Blagg tried to get the job of Master of Ceremonies on Mr. Colby's new radio program, Supper at the Supermarket, so that he could buy his girlfriend, Betty, as expensive a gift as the one his rival, Willie Murdoch, is getting her. But Mr. Colby turned Mel down cold, and Mel still hasn't been able to raise any money. However, the wonderful thing about Mel is that he never worries. Despite his predicament, he calmly goes about his duties in the fix-it shop. Right now, his keen mind is tackling the delicate problem of restoring the voice of a mama doll. Gosh, if only he gets Betty a better present than I do. With experienced fingers, he deftly manipulates the mechanism of the voice of the doll. I gotta get some money. Gee, my customers owe me plenty. Now, having completed the delicate operation, he tips the mama doll gently forward. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, just like new. Oh, I know what to do. Hey, Zuki! Yeah, I'm a am a mail. Look, Zuki, here's a list of people who owe us money. I want you to go out and collect it. Oh, okay, Mel. Uh, you can do the it 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 depend. On me. <laughs> Gee, I'm, I hope I can uh, collect some money from Mel. Well, here's the first house. Here, yeah, Mrs. Brown. I'll ring the bee, I'll ring the bee, I'll ring the bee, I'll ring the bee. I'll knock on the door. Uh, hello, Mrs. Brown. Uh, I came to collect from uh, Mel's repair job on, on your washing machine. What? Do you know what he did to my washing machine? I just put these sheets through it and look at them. Gee, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, what lovely lace curtains. <laughs> Well, uh, here's the Jones house. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Jones? I came to collect a bill for Mel Blank. Well, here's the, uh, the Smith house. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Smith? I came to collect... Uh, well, here's the Gibbs house. Uh, how do you do... It will be, well, here's the Martin house. <laughs> uh, me, me, nobody home. Well, Zuki, how did you make out? Oh, well, uh, I, I collected ten to the, ten to the, uh, five to the, uh, five, uh, three to the, uh, the... <laughs> not a dime. Oh, oh, Mel, here comes Mr. Cushing, uh, the, uh, the president of the Loyal Order of Benin... 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 Poor woman, nothing. She was visiting me. <laughs> Brought me a pie. She says, eat it. It's good for you. It'll melt in your mouth. <laughs> well, did it melt in your mouth? Yeah, but it hardened in my stomach. <laughs> Everything about that woman is hard, Mel. Her relatives, her feelings, her face, her voice. If only her arteries would get that way. <laughs> I don't know why I'm 
I'm standing here telling you all this? It's just that I don't know what to talk to. <laughs> well, now we got to be going. Uh, 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 before you hug a mighty potentate, uh, uh, where are you going? Well, I'm going to Colby's Supermarket Program. The wife will be there because they're giving away a $40 bottle of perfume to the oldest woman in the audience. Well, do you think your wife is old enough to win it? Ha! <laughs> married a woman much older than you, didn't you? Uh, Mel, age didn't matter. When I first met my wife, babe, I worshipped the ground she walked on. <laughs> Besides, she owned the property. <laughs> I guess in your case, Cupid was a real estate agent. Say, did you go with babe much before you married her? Well, I went with her for five years. And then her uncle died and left her three million dollars. After that, it was a case of love at first sight. <laughs> oh, you only married her because her uncle left her that money. No, that's not true, Mel. I would have married her no matter who left her the money. <laughs> Mel, how different it was when we were first married. I remember I carved our initials on a big tree. She was so touched, she kissed the tree. How romantic. Uh, then what happened? The tree died. <laughs> Man, you're not listening very carefully. Well, I was just thinking, if I was the oldest lady in Colby's supermarket, I'd get the $40 bottle of perfume. Then I'd give it to Betty, and that would settle everything. Say, mighty potentate, do you know where I can get a lady's wig? Well, I could let you have one of my wife's. <laughs> and I won't have any part of such skullduggery. Goodbye, Mel. Hug, 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 boo, hug, boo, boo, hug, 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 Gosh, I wonder how I sound as an old lady. Hmm. Hug, 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 boo, boo, hug, hug. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen Well, 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 are we having fun? Isn't supper at the supermarket a gosh dandy program? Ha, ha, ha Yes, sir Well, the woman with a funny hat can sit down now Well, this is Willie Murdoch Handing the mic back to your host, Mr. Colby Who will select the very oldest lady in our audience <coughs> Excuse me, young lady May I sit next to you, <laughs> girl? <laughs> Why, certainly, madam My, you're... Awfully old. Well, I gotta be to win the prize I'm getting for you. Mel, you in a dress and a wig. Shh, quiet, Betty. Now, I'll get you a better gift than Murdoch, and I don't care how I do it. <clears throat> now, ladies, the highlight of our show, the awarding of this $40 bottle of perfume. I'm going to select the oldest lady in the audience. Uh, call out your ages, please. Seventy. Eighty? Eighty-five. <laughs> Ninety. A hundred, and that's my last offer. <laughs> that's a very quaint way of putting it. Uh, madam, did you say you were a hundred? That's right. A hundred going on. Going on what? On adrenaline. <laughs> what else? <laughs> uh, madam, what do you attribute your long life to? Oh, vitamins. Vitamins, eh? Yeah. My uncle ate vitamins all the time, every day. Oh, made him so lively and jumpy. Always jolly and happy. Finally, at 90, he died. He died, huh? Yep, yeah, Peppy's funeral you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, madam, before I give you the grand prize, we'd like to know what is your secret ambition? To get the bottle of perfume. Uh -huh. Not yet. <laughs> You must tell us what your secret ambition is. Well, uh, I'd like to go on the radio. Well, what could you do on the radio? Oh, I'd be a great mistress of ceremonies on a program like this. Uh, uh, guess who this is? You have eight. Will you try for 16? I know. Phil Harris. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I should have said Baker. <laughs> no, Tommy Manville. <laughs> Sounds familiar. I'll take the perfume now. No, not before you do another impersonation, Grandmother. Well, all right. You gotta start out each day with a song. <laughs> Even when things go wrong. <laughs> I've heard that before only a short while ago. How do you like that? Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'll take the perfume now. Uh, Mr. Colby, we only have 30 seconds uh. left on the air. It's time for you to kiss the old lady. 
I'll go and you can keep the perfume. So long. I mean, so long. Just as I suspected. Mel Blank, I'll teach you to make a fool out of me. Or I'm going to break every bone in your body. <laughs> Gosh, Betty, imagine your father throwing me out like that. A fine way to treat an old lady. Oh, Mel, darling, it's all my fault. I should never have mentioned Willie Murdoch's gift to you. To get me a better gift, look what you went through. Yeah, the door of your father's supermarket. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Oh, look, here comes Willie Murdoch. Willie, what happened to you? Oh, your father didn't like the program, so he threw me out of the supermarket, too. He did? Yeah. How do you like that? Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> Just a minute. Use Colgate tooth powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. You know, that breath of trouble, unpleasing breath, has put the brakes on many a promising business career. So be on your guard against this handicap. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing, and remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. This is Mel Blank saying thanks for listening, good night, and that's all, folks. Providing you the Colgate Tooth Powder for Breakfast Sweet and Eat the Sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, now find every Tuesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.